Hello, hi, welcome everybody. Happy New Year. I say this every year, but I genuinely can't believe it's been a whole other year. I can't believe we're in 2024. The passage of time is truly unfathomable to me. I just don't feel like I live in reality anymore. <laughs> but we are here, and at the start of the new year, I always like to make a video rounding up all of the books that I plan to read in the coming year, and I like to make like a little TBR for myself. And so today we're gonna be talking about the top 24 books I wanna read in 2024. Last year was a great reading year for me, and I read so many books I really loved and hopefully this year ends up being another great reading year. I usually don't always stick to the TBR that I make for myself um, but I like to set it for myself as kind of like a guideline to set the tone for the year for myself of what types of books I would like to reach for throughout the year. So I may not stick to most of these but hopefully I do. But before we get into all the books I have two quick notes. First I want to thank today's sponsor which is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes that can help you learn or develop a new skill. At the start of the new year everyone's making their resolutions so it's the perfect time to learn a new skill, learn how to draw, develop your photography skills, or anything in between. Skillshare has tons of classes for that, and they now have new learning paths, which are hand-picked classes that are designed to be taken in order so that you can build on your skills and get the most out of each lesson. One of the learning paths that I've been looking into is one on organization and planning for creative freelancers. It starts with classes on bullet journaling, which is something I already love to do, but it's really nice to be able to do it with each lesson, and it helps hold me accountable. It has classes for creative productivity as well, so I've just found it super useful in getting myself back on track at the start of the new year. So if you're interested in trying out Skillshare for yourself, the first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So again, thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Next, I do want to remind you and thank you all for your support of my journals. My movie journal came out last year and my reading journal came out in 2021, which is crazy. But yes, I wanna thank you all for your support for these over the past years. It's just been so wonderful. So if you're interested in trying out my reading journal or my film and TV journal, the link is in the description box as always. But now without any further ado, let's get into my top 24 books I want to read in 2024. So usually when I make this list, I always mention that I like to pick these books from my physical TBR because it really helps me dwindle all of this down because there's a lot here. And this year I tried to stick to the same thing, but honestly, I've been pretty good over the past couple of years. I've been reading a lot of what I already own, so this, the number of unread books on these shelves has kind of gone down a significant amount. And while I still have a ton of unread books left on my shelves, there weren't 24 that I could think of um, that really inspired me and motivated me. I really have to go through them and unhaul some stuff because um, there's just some stuff that I know I'm not gonna read anymore. So yeah, I actually had to pick a few books that I don't physically own. Some of them I do have the audiobook for, or I know that I can borrow them from a friend or I can get them from the library. So I included a couple on here that I don't physically have, but most of these books I already physically own. So yeah, we're really cutting this down, which is, I think pretty impressive. I'm pretty proud of myself. So we have 24 books to get through, so we're not going to spend too much time talking about each one in detail. And you all know me, I don't like knowing too much about the books I read before I read them. I like being surprised. So please excuse the fact that I don't know a lot of these plot summaries. If you want to know more about them, all the books will be listed in the description box below, so you can go read the summary if you'd like to. But yes, let's get started. These are in no particular order, but the first book on my list is Half a Soul. This is one I've had on my shelf since I think last year. I think I bought this last year. And I've been wanting to read it for so long now, because it sounds like something I'm really going to enjoy. All I know about this is that it is fantasy romance, and people told me that since I love Howl's Moving Castle, I will like this. So hopefully I do, hopefully it feels similar to me as well. I'm very, very excited about this one, and I hope I love it as much as everyone else seems to. The next book on my list is The Miracles of the Namia General Store. This is a book that was recommended to me by one of you all a couple years ago now, maybe a year ago time. What is she? I really don't know anything about it other than it's about these three people who are in this general store and then there's some kind of magic that happens, um, which is kind of self-explanatory from the title, but I've heard fantastic things about this. I believe this is translated from Japanese and I think people also told me there's a movie of this, so if there is I will also be watching that, but I do want to read this this year because I have really high hopes that I will end up loving this book. All right, so the next few books are all series because this year I really plan to read a lot of series because last year I finally got back into reading a bunch of fantasy series which is just like that's what I love to read more than anything else so I hope to continue that this year and so I'm hoping to finally pick up 
a book that I think has been on um, this list, like these videos for years at this point, because I've had this for so long and I still haven't read it. And that is of course, The Bear and the Nightingale. <laughs> Everyone tells me I'm gonna love this. Everybody tells me that this will become probably one of my favorite series and I trust you all. I believe that it probably will be. I don't know why I keep putting it off, but this year I'm finally, hopefully going to pick it up. Don't hold that against me if I don't. I really don't know anything about this other than it's magical and fantastical and it takes place in some Russian village. Um, and I think there's like folk tales and fairy tales involved in this. But again, really hoping to love this one. If it doesn't live up to my expectations, I'll be really sad because I do own the entire series. <laughs> Next up, we have a series that I plan to finish this year, and that is A Curse for True Loves. This is the final book in the Once Upon a Broken Heart series. This came out last year, and I've been wanting to read it ever since it came out, but I just never found the time last year. So I really do want to pick this up as soon as possible because I love the first two books in this series. It was a lot of fun, and I can't wait to see how it ends. Next up on my list is a book series that that I don't own, but one that I do have on audiobook, so I know that I can read this whenever I want to, and that is the Poppy War Trilogy by R.F. Kuang. Everyone tells me that I'm going to absolutely adore this series, and I believe it when people say that. I feel like I'm really gonna like it. I feel like it's gonna destroy me, because that's how everyone acts when they read this series. And I really loved Babel, and though Yellowface was not really one of my favorite books, I do really like R.F. Kuang's writing, and I feel like based on everything I've heard about it, this series will probably end up becoming one of my favorites as well, or at least I'm hoping so. I know that that this is kind of historical fantasy, lots of violence, gore, it's about war, so yeah, I can imagine it's going to be a difficult one to read, but I'm really, really hoping to love it. Next up is another book that I don't own yet, but I will borrow a copy from my friend, and I know it's pretty shocking that I don't own this and that I didn't read this last year, but that is Sword Catcher by Cassandra Clare. This is Cassandra Clare's first adult novel and first novel that's not part of the Shadowhunter Chronicles, if you're not counting like The Iron Trial, which she wrote with Holly Black. So yeah, this was her entry into the adult fantasy world, and I'm I'm really excited to read this book. I've heard nothing about it. Like, I don't know how it was received. I've heard no reviews. I've heard no opinions. So I'm really going into this with honestly very few expectations. I hope I like it, but I don't know that I will. I don't know that I won't. Maybe I'll make a video out of it if it's something you guys are interested in seeing. But yeah, I don't know anything about it. Don't want to know anything about it. I just want to go into it and experience it all for the first time without any outside influences. But yeah, I do definitely want to read this one in 2024. I want to get to it as soon as possible. Okay, next up I have a book that is from my bookshelf. I have the whole series. I don't know a thing about this series, okay? I think I bought these maybe five years ago or something just because I really liked the covers and the title. Something about it just drew me in. I don't even think I read the summary, but now I really want to read them. I don't know what it is. Something is drawing me to this series, and that is the Invisible Library series by Genevieve Cogman. I don't know if any of you have read this. I don't know if any of you have heard of this. I don't think that they're that popular. I have three books, so there are at least three books in this series, but there might actually be more. So if any of you have read this, please let me know any of your thoughts on it. But like I said, I can't explain why. There's just something that has been drawn me to this series for the past few months. I just keep looking at it on my bookshelf and I'm like, hmm, I really want to read that. I think it's in part because I've heard nothing about it and lately I've kind of been in this place where all I want to read are books that I don't know anything about, books that I don't see other people talking about. Not because like I want to be different and read like unpopular things, but just because like I, I feel like because I make book content constantly. I'm always inundated with other people's opinions and I know I always give you my opinions on books and that, that's the whole point of what I do. But sometimes it can be really nice to just go into something that you've never heard a thing about, that you've barely ever seen anywhere, just so that you can have like a completely fresh experience. And I think that's kind of what I want to do with this series. So if you've read it, please let me know if you liked it. And hopefully it ends up being that type of hidden gem series that I will then fall in love with and shout about from the rooftops and try and convince everybody to read. Maybe. It could also end up being horrible. Who knows? But I do really want to read it. All right, continuing along with the fantasy series, the next one I really want to read that I had on my shelves was We Hunt the Flame. This is one I've had for a very, very long time. I just really, really love the cover art for this. I think it's really pretty, and I've heard nonstop good things about this book. But the main reason I kind of want to read it is because the author has a new book coming out this year. I can't remember what it's called, but it looked fantastic, and I really want to read that book because I think I'm really going to like it. And so I thought that since I already have one of her books, I may as well start here. And I've heard nothing but good things about this series. So yeah, I've also been getting a lot back into YA fantasy. So I think this will be a good one to continue on with. And yeah, I hope that I really like this because I want to keep it because it's really pretty and I don't like getting rid of my pretty books when I don't like them. All right, next series on my list. I guess if you count all of these series, I have way more than 24 books because they have more than one book, but we're just counting the first books in these series for now. But the next one is another one that I think has been on 
at least two of these lists before, and that is Legend Born by Tracy Dion. I just hear nothing but good things about this series all the time, and because I have been back in my YA fantasy era again, I guess. I really want to finally pick this one up because I genuinely think I'm going to be obsessed with this. All I know about it is that it's about some girl whose mother dies in an accident and then she discovers that she has magical powers, which sounds like such quintessential YA fantasy, but I know it's going to be even more than that. So yeah, I can't wait to pick this up and again, really, really hope I end up loving it. Okay, so the next book I have on my list kind of counts as two, so if you only see me show 23 books, it's because I'm counting this as two because I really want to read The Fragile Threads of Power by V.E. Schwab, which is the first book in the new series um, that's part of the Darker Shade of Magic series, like a continuation of that series. But I need to reread the Darker Shade of Magic series first because I don't remember anything that happened. I love that series so much, but I can't remember a thing about it. And I don't think that's a very good place to be in to start this series. So I'm gonna have to reread that in order to read this, but I do really wanna read this. I love A Darker Shade of Magic. That series is so good. It's such good adult fantasy. And again, with me wanting to read more fantasy series, again I think it'll be really nice to go back and reread an old favorite and then continue on with some more in that same world. Okay and then I think this is the last fantasy series on my list but this is one that I think I've had on previous lists as well but I recently got some new editions of these books and it has really motivated me to decide to pick them up and that is the His Dark Materials trilogy by Philip Pullman. These are the Folio Society editions and let me just show you. They are so unbelievably beautiful. I am obsessed with these editions. The Folio Society was super kind and gifted me this set which is just amazing because I've been looking at these for years and I've been in love with them. They just have some of the most beautiful editions of books I've ever seen. So yeah, I really really love these and getting this new set has really made me want to pick them up. And one of my best friends, this is one of his favorite series of all time and so he's been wanting me to read it forever. And so yeah, I'm really excited about these and definitely want to get to them this year. Okay, next up I have I think two nonfiction books on my list. And the first one is one that I bought earlier last year and that is What My Bones Know by Stephanie Fu. This is a memoir about the author's experience with CPTSD and I've just heard fantastic things about this book that it's really difficult to read but also really emotional and it was recommended to me by one of my friends and they really loved it and so I hope to really love it as well. Again it was another book that I had on my shelves that I've been meaning to get to for a little while so hopefully this is the year I finally do. Okay and then the next nonfiction book I have on my list is one that I picked up at a bookstore in the last month or so and I just knew I had to read this. It was one of those things where it was like, oh, that's what I've been looking for and I'll explain in a second. But it's called The Self-Devouring Society, Capitalism, Narcissism, and Self-Destruction. I was in a bookstore with my friend and we were just browsing and I saw this on the shelf. I saw the title and I was like, that is it. That is what I've always been talking about. I need that book. I'm leaving here with that because I saw the title and I was like, that is the exact like phenomena that I have been wanting to read about. It's somewhat related to this phenomena that I have been trying to express that I talked about a little bit in my Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes video and my critique of um, dystopian fiction and capitalism and how those two things don't always work together, I feel like this is going to be the research material I need to make my Hunger Games video. <laughs> that is why I bought this. That is why I plan to read this. Also, I just find the topic like really interesting. This is the type of stuff I used to read in school all the time. I also know that it's going to be a great book, but like impossible to read because you can tell from this horrible formatting um, that an academic wrote this. Only academics do this. Only an academic academic would write something this unreadable. That's how you know it's actually going to be good and have some worthwhile information. So yeah, I'm really excited to read this. I've literally never heard about it before. I think it just came out last October, or at least the English translation did. So it's fairly new and it's exactly what I was looking for. So I'm so, so excited about this. This is the type of nonfiction I love to read. I don't read much nonfiction, but I do love a good memoir and I do love some theory. I think I've mentioned at least a couple times now on here that I have really been getting back into dystopian fiction. Having reread The Hunger Games, really just like reignited this love of that genre for me. Uh, despite the fact that it's not one of my favorite genres, I don't like a lot of dystopian, but when I like a dystopian, oh my god, it's like one of my favorite books of all time. So I really have been getting back into it. I want to go back and read some of the really bad ones I didn't like as a kid, and also go back and read some new ones that I never experienced. So starting off with a new series that I would really love to read that I have never read before, but I feel like I'm going to be obsessed with this, that is the Unwind series by Neil Shusterman. This book actually came out quite a while 
while ago. It was published in 2007, so it actually predates the Hunger Games series. But it's a YA dystopian series, and all I really know about it is that it takes place in a future version of the US where there's a second civil war over reproductive rights. And I just think that that sounds utterly fascinating. But if that's not enough to get you to read it, let me just read you this small part of the summary on the back. This is the resolution to that reproductive rights civil war. The chilling resolution, life is inviolable from the moment of conception until age 13. Between the ages of 14 and 18, however, parents can have their children, quote, unwound, whereby all of the child's organs are transplanted into different recipients so that life doesn't technically end. That is so disturbing, but I just know this is gonna be so good. This is gonna be exactly the type of dystopian, why a dystopian, that I devour, that I love. Neil Schusterman is the author of the Scythe series, which is another sci-fi dystopian series that I read a few years ago. And I really like that series as well, which is kind of what's motivated me to pick this up too, because I know I like his writing. I know I like a lot of the themes that he explores. So I have a feeling that I might end up really loving this too. The concept alone gives me goosebumps. It's so disturbing, but I really, really think I'm going to love this. So yeah, I cannot wait to finally get around to this series. The next dystopian series on my list that I wanna read this year is one I've already read, but I haven't read these since I was a kid, and that is the Ugly series by Scott Westerfeld. For some reason, probably because I read them sometime around 2010, 2011, to me these books came out around that time. They did not. This series came out in like 2005. The first one I think was published in 2005, which is 19 years ago, nearly 20 years ago. That's crazy. I can't believe that series has been out for that long, but I really, really loved these when I was growing up, and I really want to revisit them because I'm not sure how they hold up. I barely remember a thing about them other than I really like the concept and I found it so fascinating. But then again, sometimes I don't trust my 13 year old brain because I also loved Twilight at that time. So my child self was not always the best judge. So I really wanna reread these now and see what I think. Next, keeping on theme with some more sci-fi dystopian fiction, the next book I really wanna read in 2024 is Parable of the Talents by Octavia E. Butler. Parable of the Sower was my favorite book of 2022 and I really, really need to read this next book. I know I'm gonna love it. I know that it's going to do to me exactly what Parable of the Sower did and just completely consume my mind, which is what I want from every book I read. So I just know I'm really gonna love this and I wanna finally get around to it, which is why the next book that's also on my list is Kindred by Octavia Butler. She is easily one of my favorite authors of all time, even though I've only read one book by her. I just know, I just know she's probably one of the smartest people to have ever lived, um, at least one of the smartest writers to have ever lived. And I know that this book is also going to destroy me in probably more ways than one. I wanna read everything she's ever written. So these are the two that I own that I haven't read. So I wanna get around to them this year. Next up on my list is is another book that I don't own but I do have the audiobook for it and that is Mexican Gothic. This is a book I've been wanting to read for some time because I love the author's writing. I read The Beautiful Ones last year which is her other book and I really really liked that but I feel like this one will probably end up being a favorite for me. From what I know about it people say it's kind of horror and I see it on a lot of like horror lists and I don't know anything about it besides that and I don't want to and so I really hope it lives up to the expectations I've set for it in my head. I probably shouldn't set my expectations too high for all of these books because I'll just be disappointed, but I know my taste fairly well, so usually I'm not too let down. <laughs> Next up on my list is a book I have had sitting on my shelf for years and years now, and that is Tender Morsels by Margot Lanigan. This is a book that I bought from a used bookstore circa like 2017 or something, a really long time ago. And I just really, really liked the cover and the friend that I was with recommended it and said that it was really good. So I decided to pick it up. Since then, I've heard a couple of authors that I really like recommend this book and a couple of reviewers I trust recommend it. From what I know about it, it's kind of like a reimagining of the Snow White fairy tale, but it's even darker than the original story. And so I think I'm really gonna like it. I love any kind of like gothic folktale gothic fairy tale type of thing. So yeah, I am so excited to finally get around to this so that I can finally have read it and it won't just be sitting there on my shelf. But it is very, very pretty. So if I don't like it, I will also be sad because it's so upsetting when a book with a beautiful cover is not as good on the inside. So hopefully this one is not one of those cases. <laughs> Next up on my list is another book that's been sitting on my shelf since the day it was released. I literally bought this like right when it came out and I still haven't touched it, even though this is one of my favorite authors. I know, I'm so bad. <laughs> but that is All My Rage by Sabah Tahir. The An Ember in the Ashes series, as you all know, is one of my all-time favorite fantasy series. I love that series so much, and I love Sabah Tahir as an author. And so I have been wanting to read this, like I said, since the day that it came out, and I just haven't gotten around to it. So hopefully I finally do this year. I just have not been in like a YA contemporary mood for a long time now. And I know that this is not gonna be like your average YA contemporary, or at least for me, 
It won't be like your average YA contemporary. Her writing is just like something else. I really, really love it. And I love the types of stories she chooses to tell. I just really need to get myself to do it because I know that I will love this once I read it. Next up is another book that I don't physically own, but this is like high on my priority list of books I really want to read because I've been wanting to read it for a long time. And that is Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. I almost read this book when I made my reading five sad books video a couple years ago um, because everyone says this book is devastatingly sad, but also that it's beautiful and just a fantastic novel. And I feel like I'm really going to like this and I really, really want to get around to reading it. I feel like this is a modern classic at this point and so many people have read it. I don't know a thing about it, which again, don't want to know, but I feel like it's going to be something I end up really enjoying and probably, hopefully, something that also ends up emotionally devastating me. All right, so we're down to the final two books and the next one I really want to read this year is one I bought earlier this year and just never got around to it, um, but that is Masters of Death by Olivia Blake. I actually have the self-published edition of this too, so I think I bought it maybe even the year before that or earlier last year, but I also just never got around to reading it, but I really liked the um, cover art for this, so I decided to pick up the finished copy even though I haven't read it, which I'm not doing that as much anymore. It's not, it's not a good thing to do because sometimes you don't like the book and then you just end up wasting money on something that you don't even want and I have no space, so I really shouldn't be doing that. But I have gotten better about it, which is why the TBR has dwindled down so much. But nonetheless, um, it is a beautiful cover, and I do really want to read this book. I really don't know anything about this one either, other than it's like a little bit dark, and it's about a vampire who's a real estate agent, and that just sounds so good. It sounds so fun to me, so I really feel like I hope at least that I'll really like this. Olivia Blake's books have been pretty hit or miss for me. I didn't really love Alone With You in the Ether, but I did enjoy The Atlas Six. Not my favorite, but it was fun, so hopefully this is more up my alley. So yeah, excited to get around to this. Okay, and then finally, the very last book on my list. I guess I should have mentioned this with the dystopian fiction, but it's fine. It, we're saving the best for last, if you can call it that. <laughs> this year, I really want to reread The Host by Stephanie Meyer. <laughs> So this all started because um, about two months ago now, I decided to rewatch the host movie because I hadn't seen it since it was in theaters and I never liked it then. And I was right to not like it. It's not good. <laughs> Having rewatched it, it's actually probably worse than I remembered back then. But it just got me thinking about this book so much because when I first read this book, I was in love with it. This was literally like one of my favorite books back in the day. Even after I stopped liking the Twilight series, I still liked the host, but I barely remembered a thing about it. So watching the movie almost felt like experiencing an entirely new story. So I decided that I think it would be fun to go back and reread The Host. I plan to read it for like an in-depth reading vlog and just do like a deep dive analysis into it. For what reason? I don't know. I just think this story is insane. I feel like I have a lot to say about it. So that's really what I want to do. This will probably end up being one of the first books I finish reading this year. I've already started it, but yeah, that's, that's also on my list. I know, surprising. Shocking, I really didn't think I'd ever read this again, but I just, it just feels right for some reason. Can't explain it. It's the dystopian, it's all gotten to my head and I'm just really feeling like going back and revisiting all these old stories. So yeah, look forward to the forthcoming dystopian videos that I will be making, probably multiple of them about multiple different books, the host video, and definitely my Hunger Games videos once I get around to that too. But yeah, I'm not getting out of this dystopian phase for a while. So sorry that I'm just gonna subject you all to my hyperfixations, but that's what you signed up for. So I'm not actually sorry about it. But there you all have it. That is it for my list of top 24 books I want to read in 2024. Let me know in the comments down below what are your top three books that you really want to read this next year. And also if you've read any of the books that are on my list, let me know any of your thoughts on them and let me know where you think I should start. If you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!